out on the field. The pride of the Southland band crisply marches into the giant tee. The rear, the roar of 97,000 fans rises with each rhythmic step. In the background, George Beatsis is singing White Falls White. The orange and white shakers flood the air. The volunteers are ready at the north end of the football field to burst through the gate. They're coming now, racing onto the field for the giant tee. In that magic moment that says, wherever you are, it's football time in Tennessee. Welcome to the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley, and this is the day after Tennessee took care of business yesterday, 65-24 over Tennessee Martin. It is officially Kentucky week. You know, the next two weeks are going to be so huge, such a huge opportunity for this football program. The next two weeks give you the opportunity to make this a special season. Now, win or lose, this team finishes 11-1, and 10-2. Still a solid job by this coaching staff, but let's go win them all. Let's go make something special happen in year two of the Josh Heupel era. Era. But today we're going to take a little bit of time and talk about Tennessee Martin. And then as the week progresses, we're going to start talking more and more about Kentucky. Like I said, big opportunity coming up on Saturday. But hey, this is the day after the emotional game. Sometimes the emotional post games, uh, we get a little crazy, but it, it was Tennessee Martin. Not a whole lot to unpack here. Like I said, Tennessee took care of business. We'll get into it. As always, do me a favor. Go ahead and smash that like button just below the video. It's quick. It's free. It's easy. Uh, it helps the channel. Also, if you're new to the Talking Falls Network, welcome. Uh, we're not experts. We're not insiders. We are fans just like you. So if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. You won't miss out when we go live or when we drop a video. I'll be live tonight. 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time playing NCAA football and also talking Tennessee football. So come hang out. Should be a good time tonight. Again, live at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's talk about this football game from yesterday. Again, Tennessee 65. Tennessee Martin a 24. And the big question for me, you guys know what it was going into the week. Uh, how would Tennessee respond? Absolutely epic win last week against Alabama. And, you know, we celebrated that all week long all the way through Wednesday I mean we celebrated all week long you know people are talking about listening to Dixieland a lot watching the highlights watching the replay just such a huge turning point for this football program to end that 15 year streak against Alabama how would this program respond Josh Typen was asked just that going into the game by the SEC Network, said they responded in a very mature way, that he was pleased with the way they went through practice. Uh, and he talked about the challenge being Tennessee. Like, we are the challenge each and every week. It's not about the Georgias, the Floridas, the LSUs, the UT Martins, the Akrons. It does not matter who you play. The focus is on yourself, doing what you need to do. It is a championship mindset, and I love that from Josh Heupel. Uh, now, how did this team start? Uh, the offense started absolutely on fire. Uh, the first team went 7-of-7. Seven 7-of-7. Seven. Seven of seven. The score was 45-7 to seven when Joe Milton entered the game late in the second quarter. The only drive that you could really even say stalled, if that's what you want to call it, was the fourth series of the game, and that's when the starting offense settled for a 40-yard field goal from Chase McGrath. But outside of that, just absolutely phenomenal. Again, they scored every single time they had the football. Hendon Hooker ended the day 18 of 24 for 276 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, he also added 28 yards on the ground. But when you look at Hendon Hooker's numbers, 276 yards and three touchdowns, and he was on the bench uh, late in the second quarter, didn't play at all in the second half. And when you talk about the Heisman Trophy and, and, and what it means, and we talk about you know Stroud at Ohio State, everybody hopping him up, that kid was in the game late throwing touchdown passes. So it, it is what it is. Uh, you can take what you want with numbers, with opponents, do what you want with it. Hendon Hooker had himself a day and then went and sat down late in the second quarter uh, to get ready for Kentucky that's coming up. And that's the benefit for Ohio State. And, and I know their listeners love to flood in here and run their mouth and talk trash. Just look at your schedule. Uh, just look at your schedule and tell me one team that you've played that is above 500 outside of Toledo. Uh, I'll wait and you still have your starting quarterback out there late in the game throwing touchdown passes. Give me a give me a break. Absolute joke. Uh, defensively for me, uh, they started a little slow. Obviously, UT Martin went down and scored on the opening possession. Second possession, they were doing the same thing. They were marching right back down the field, but you had a big-time play from walk-on. William Wright gets the interception, and then it was kind of a downward spiral from there for Tennessee Martin. After the interception in the second possession, they had a three and out. They had a fumble on first down, and then they had a couple of more three and outs. And the defense really kind of settled in as far as their starters go. 
Uh, then the backups came in. And the twos, man, the twos did not look good yesterday. Offensively, defensively, but more specifically on the defensive side of things. Uh, again, Tennessee Martin ended up putting up some numbers. Their starting quarterback, uh, Dresser, went through for over 300 yards, two touchdowns. And, and that, was, that was my feeling going into the game. And I, I knew they would not be able to stop Tennessee's offense. I don't think very many teams in the country, if any, can stop Tennessee's offense. But Tennessee Martin likes to throw the football around, so I, I wasn't really surprised that they put up numbers. But you also got to look at how beat up, how banged up Tennessee is in the secondary. Jalen McCullough, again, still out with the off-the-field incident. Kamal Haddon, still limited in practice. He didn't play. Christian Charles was out. Uh, you also had Turnage who went off the field. I've not yet seen what his injury update is. Hopefully you get some of these guys back this week against Kentucky. Kentucky's going to come out, and they're going to throw the rock. They are going to throw the football all over you. But the bottom line is, the same as we said going into the game, coming out of the game, it was never in doubt. Uh, Josh Heupel puts opponents like this away, never gives them an opportunity to make it late, gets the backups in, gets reps for everybody. You saw a lot of young guys out there, herring out there, running around on defense. You saw Tyree West making some plays on defense. You got walk-ons in the secondary, and, and that's good for this football team. Not only is it good for development and growth, it's also good for uh, giving your, your starters, your ones, an opportunity to rest and get healthy going into a huge two weeks of football against Kentucky and then going on the road to play Georgia. So that's pretty much it for the Tennessee Martin game. Tennessee went out and did what Tennessee needed to do. Uh, Hendon Hooker has finally set the record 19 straight games with a touchdown pass. 19 straight games breaks Heath Schuler's record. That's a cool moment to see. Uh, for Hendon Hooker, because the kid's a leader, man. I love what he brings to the table. You know, not just the way he plays football, but also the way he carries himself off the field. But here we are, man. Here we are, seven games into the season. Tennessee sits at 7-0, and ranked third in the AP poll, set themselves up nicely. And again, just, just year two. That's, that's the part that blows your mind, is looking where this football program was at less than two years ago when Josh Heupel uh, took over. What he's been able to do, getting them up into the top three undefeated, with a realistic opportunity to run the table. Like, nobody thought that. Nobody. I, and I know some of you guys come in the chat and you're like, undefeated, 12-0, and 15-0, feels like 98. So many people say that every single year that it's hard to get validation when you make that prediction. But dang it, some of you guys were right. Here we are with an opportunity to run the table. Go 12-0. and 0, Go to Atlanta. Compete for an SEC championship. Compete for a spot in the college football playoff. Seven games into the year, this football team's averaging 50.1 points per game. That is first nationally in points scored per game. Defensively, giving up a little over 23. They're, they're a little higher than middle of the pack, 51st out of 131 teams. This defense, they have to be better. There's no doubt about it. But I fully expect them to go into that Kentucky game and compete. They'll dial up blitzes. They'll dial up pressure. I think they'll get after Will Levis. It's going to be a tough game. That Kentucky game is going to be a tough game, but I like the way it matches up for Tennessee. I, I think I saw early Tennessee is going to be a two-touchdown favorite. You got to like Tennessee in that game. Dauber touched on it yesterday in the postgame show. Night game, dark mode. That stadium is going to be rocking, guys. It, it may not be to the level of the Alabama game, but I think you may be able to replicate Florida. You know, a, a 330 kick versus a night game. Still a big opportunity, man. Huge opportunity on Saturday at 7 p.m. I can't wait to see dark mode. What do you guys think? You guys hit the comments. It's, it's an ongoing debate in this fan base. Should they checker Neyland with black and orange, or should they go all dark mode and black out the stadium? I, I vote option two. I say we black out Neyland Stadium. I think that would look sick, something we've never done before. I think it would be awesome to see that against Kentucky. But this is the day after. Again, Tennessee takes care of business, 65-24. What were your thoughts on the game? Hit that comment section and let me know. Tennessee just took care of business as we expected them to take care of business. Hendon Hooker doing what Hendon Hooker does. Joe Milton only went 4 of 7 for 135 yards and a touchdown. Honestly, would have liked to see them run the offense maybe a little bit more uh, with Joe Milton in the game. Taven Jackson got some run, got banged up, went down on his non-throwing shoulder. We'll see how he bounces back. Running... I feel like the running back struggle to run the football. Unless you get Hendon Hooker involved in the read option type game, I think these running backs struggle. Jabari Small, 11 carries, 33 yards. Jalen Wright, 6 carries, 19 yards. Dylan Sampson led the way with 62. Averaged 4.8 yards per carry, but also had one run for, I think it went about 45 yards. 
So most of that came off of one chunk play. I just feel like this offense is really only clicking uh, when you've got Hinton Hooker out there running the football as well. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. Hit the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on the game and also on checkering. Neyland and orange and black are going dark mode. Uh, also, make sure you guys smash the thumbs up on the way out the door. Go check out the official merchandise of the Talking Balls Network. You can get that business shirt, the Tennessee-Alabama scoreboard shirt, bonfire.com slash store slash Talking Balls. Any and all support, greatly appreciated. Also, make sure you become a member of the channel. If you like what we do, you want to financially support what we do, hit that join button down below. It's as little as 99 cents a month. Uh, you give us the opportunity to create more content, hopefully do more morning streams. I know I told you guys we were going to do a Friday morning stream. Completely double booked myself. I forgot I had something going on on Friday, so won't be able to do that. We'll definitely be live tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Tomorrow morning, Monday morning show, 9 a.m., come hang out. And maybe we'll throw a bonus morning stream in on Thursday or something. We'll check the schedule and see, keep you guys up to date. But that's going to do it for this one. This is the Talking Falls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange.